Asian immigration to the United States began in the 1850s with the California Gold Rush, the building of the Transcontinental Railroad, sugarcane and pineapple plantations in Hawaii. Japanese farms, fishermen, canneries emerged up and down the West Coast, along with the bustling Japan towns and Chinatowns. And as immigration grew, so did the rise of hate. Anti-Japanese sentiment was fueled by organizations like the Japanese Exclusion League, the California State Grange, and the native sons of the Golden West, who referred to these new immigrants as the Yellow Peril and the Asian Horde. Injustices to Japanese Americans didn't just start in 1941. That was just the culmination of, of all this fear. The Japanese American Citizens League has a long history in the United States, you know, founded in 1929, and much of the leadership of the JCL were young Nisei Japanese Americans who were in their early 30s. That's an awfully young age to be uh, leading a community. And certainly the issues that the JCL has always focused on are issues of equality, issues of uh, inclusion here in the United States. But it was about providing services for our own community members that were not available outside of our own community because of institutionalized racism and practices. The JCL was an organization that championed a lot of uh, legal issues too. Uh, the Alien Land Law Act, anti-miscegenation laws, um, being able to uh, outmarry. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air, President Roosevelt has just announced. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Within eight days after Pearl Harbor, the FBI picked up 2,192 Japanese and Japanese Americans, many of whom were members of the JCL. It's very clear that what the U.S. did um, with 9066 was truly an injustice at a strike of a pen. After the uh, order came down for them to be excluded from the West Coast, from California, they were sent to uh, Santa Anita Racetrack. They had to live in horse stalls. There was horse manure on the walls, hay on the ground. They had a one-year-old child. My grandmother uh, was with them. They lived in a stable. I think she found that to be the most embarrassing and appalling for someone who had, uh, who had done nothing wrong. They were then transported across the country. They didn't know where though they were going. They didn't know how long they were going to be in prison. Uh, they ended up in Roar, Arkansas. It was a swampland. We ended up at Manzanar. They were in uh, Post in Arizona. And they were placed in Gila River. We went to Heart Mountain, Wyoming. That was our home for the duration of World War II. It was totally unprecedented that they would have no due process for a group of people just because of the color of their skin. Obviously, if you got interned, you're gonna get your, your property repossessed, you're gonna get your car taken away. So they lost everything they had. The JACL argued for and won the right of Japanese Americans to serve in the U.S. military resulting in the famous 442nd Regimental Combat Team, which joined the 100th Battalion from Hawaii and became the most highly decorated unit in U.S. military history. When the war finally ended, the JACL assisted families as they left the government camps and helping them resettle back to the West Coast and the Midwest. JCL really set the course for what is good negotiations. We have to be, as, as they say, you're either at the table or you're on the table. So I think the ACL's position is that they want to be at the table. If they always had a battle, then that's good. So it taught us to you know, fight for what you believe in. Martin Luther King, March on Washington, uh, Selma, Lovings versus Virginia. JCL was there. People need to understand that JCL is an active participant. Bill Martitani was actually at the court cases being able to argue Lovings versus Virginia. The 1978 convention of the National JCL, they passed a resolution saying that they were going to seek uh, an apology from the Congress. The JCL met with Senator Danny Noah, 
Senator Noah's idea was, no, you've got to prime the pump. You've got to educate America first. A legislation is really sometimes the aligning of the stars. You could not have had a better all-star crew than that. That was the A-team. You have to mention Sparky Matsunaga. He knocked on the door of every congressman. Uh, Bob Matsui was another hero. Uh, guys that could really get stuff done. Of course, there was the godfather, you know why. You know, he was kind of like the general behind the scenes. And it was his uh, direction and advice that the uh, commission be formed. I remember seeing Norm Mineta and Bob Matsui on C-SPAN arguing for redress, crying, talking about their stories, about how you know their families were taken away, what they lost. And I thought, you know, these are men who are just fairly new to Congress. Essentially, they were risking their entire political career. I was able to see what a small group of people could really do if we had justice on our side. You know, we look at uh, English as second language, gay rights, equal wages, women's rights. You look at the issue of same-sex marriage. Uh, JSL was the first national organization to support uh, that concept. The JCL is also an entity that can um, deal with uh, uh, civil rights issues, social injustice issues on, uh, on a county and citywide and a, a statewide and national scope. You're looking at the uh, World Trade Center. We understand that a plane has crashed into... Right after 9-11, we put out a statement uh, about how terrible it was, but let's not forget people's due process. It was very gratifying to hear President Bush. And let's not let happen to the Arab Americans what happened to Norm in uh, 1941. JCL called Muslim and Arab groups and said, we're behind you. And it was a wonderful fulfillment of the legacy of redress that we could stand up and we could support a besieged minority group, a marginalized group, uh, because of our own experience. You know, we came away from uh, the darkness of the incarceration into the sunlight of redress, and we came with a voice again. We had a political voice. We came with our political birthright. We came with understanding that we have the right to dissent. We have the right to stand up. To stand up and say, we're not gonna allow this to happen again in the 2000s. JCL understands America's promise. The promise that in our nation, an individual is not to be judged by the color of their skin, by the nation of their origin, or by the God whom they choose to worship. Thomas Jefferson said, you know, a country that chooses security over liberty deserves neither. I've said that to my own kids, that, you know, when you see injustice, if you can do something about it, it's important that you do. Because if you don't, no one else will. The uh, Japanese American Citizens League is considered the oldest Asian Pacific American civil rights organization. As I recall, the motto of the JCL is for better security through unity. And the other phrase of being a better American in a greater America.